A blessed and pleasant good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to another morning prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. This Facebook has been giving so much trouble this morning that it is unbelievable. I have had to restart Facebook about four times since we tried to go live at around three minutes to six. Today is April. No, today is May. I must be in love with April. Today is May the 6th. And it is a blessing for us to be here. While we try to make sure everything is up and running, let's listen to our opening hymn. Our first hymn for this morning is one entitled, Awake My Soul, Stretch Every Nerve. Let's have a listen. Awake my soul, stretch every nerve and press with thee. I hope you enjoyed that one there entitled Awake My Soul, Stretch Every Nerve. We're going to continue with our morning prayer for today, May the 6th, 2021. With our opening sentence, let's get our words here up on screen. And there we go. Hopefully it is working well on your end and you can see everything as I can see it. <laughs> We continue with our opening sentence, followed by versicle 1 on page 35. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Versicle 1. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Our invitatory prayer. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the canticle Christ or Passover, which can be found on page 37, if you are following along in your books of common prayer. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all, and in living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. This morning, we want to pause briefly for a few seconds to call to mind those things that in thought, word, or deed we would have committed that might have been displeasing to God, that might have been unjust to our neighbors, or perhaps would have been unfair even to our very selves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins.
Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 71, and our psalm will be read for us by Miss Nikia Gomez. Let's have a listen. The Psalm 71. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be ashamed. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the clutches of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb you have been my strength. My praise shall be always of you. I have become a portent to many, but you are my refuge and my strength. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all the, all the day long. Do not cast me off in my old age. Forsake me not when my strength fails. For my enemies are talking against me, and those who lie in wait for my life take counsel together. They say God has forsaken him. Go after him and seize him. Because there is no one who will save. O oh God, be not far from me. Come quickly to help me, O oh my God. Let those who set themselves against me be put to shame and be disgraced. Let those who seek to do me evil be covered with scorn and reproach. But I shall always wait in patience and shall praise you more and more. My mouth shall recount your mighty acts and saving deeds all day long, though I cannot know the number of them. I will begin with the mighty works of the Lord God. I will recall your righteousness, yours alone. God, you have taught me since I was young, and to this day I tell of your wonderful works. And now that I am old and gray-headed, O oh God, forsake me till I make known your strength to this generation and your power to all who are to come. Your righteousness, O God, reaches to the heavens. You have done great things. Who is like you, O God? You have showed me great troubles and adversities, but you will restore my life and bring me up again from the deep places of the earth. You strengthen me more and more. You enfold and comfort me. Therefore, I will praise you upon the lyre of your faithfulness, O my God. I will sing to you with the harp, O Holy One of Israel. My lips will sing with joy when I play to you, and so will my soul, which you have redeemed. My tongue will proclaim all day long, for they are ashamed and disgraced who sought to do me harm. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We want to thank Miss Nikia for reading for us this morning. We continue with our second canticle for the morning, the canticle, The Song of Moses. I will sing to the Lord for his glorious triumph, the horse and the rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord has become my strength and refuge. The Lord himself has become my savior. He is my God and I will praise him. My father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord himself is a mighty warrior. The Lord, the Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is majestic in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Holy, awesome, worker of wonders. In steadfast love, you led your people. You guided your redeemed with your great strength. You brought them in safety to your holy place and planted them firm on your own mountain. You brought them into your own house. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. 
Our Bible lesson from this morning comes from the book of the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 27, through to chapter 15, verse 3. And reading for us again, the Bible reading, is Miss Nikia Gomez. Let's have a listen. Wisdom of Solomon 14, 27, and 15, 3. For the worship of idols not to be named is the beginning and cause and end of every evil. For their worshippers either rave in exaltation or prophecy lies, or live unrighteously or readily commit perjury. For because they trust in lifeless idols, they swear wicked oaths and expect to suffer no harm. But just penalties would overtake them on two counts, because they thought wrongly about God in devoting themselves to idols, and because in deceit they swore unrighteously through contempt for holiness. For it is not the power of the things by which people swear, but the just penalty for those who sin, that always pursues the transgression of the unrighteous. But you, O our God, are kind and true, patient and ruling all things in mercy. For even if we sin, we are yours, knowing your power. But we will not sin because we know that you acknowledge us as yours. For to know you is complete righteousness, and to you, and to know your power is the root of immortality. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We want to thank Miss Nikia for reading for us this morning. And Miss Nikia is reading in honor of the birthday of Miss Arlette Gomez. We want to wish Miss Arlette a happy and blessed birthday. If you allow me a few minutes to go back to the beginning of our reading here from the Wisdom of Solomon, and I'm working on that. Here we go. Today is Thursday, and today is celebrated as Ascension Day, and Ascension Sunday is probably going to be celebrated this Sunday as well. Now, Ascension Day is an important day, and it is, unless I have it wrong, maybe I'm thinking ahead of time, maybe Ascension is the 13th of May and I have it wrong. I have to check my calendar. But at any rate, when we begin to celebrate Ascension Day, we will be talking about the whole image of Jesus going up into heaven. Now, why did Ascension Day come to my mind? Ascension Day came to my mind because of the um, wisdom reading this morning. And yes, Ascension is the 13th, I believe it is. But Ascension came to my mind as I was reading the wisdom reading because of the way that the whole reading comes across this morning. If we look at the reading from wisdom this morning, for the worship of idols not to be named, is the beginning and cause and end of every evil. And this brought Ascension Day to my mind because at the end of, well, not at the end, but at the beginning of the ministry of the disciples, I can't call it the end of Jesus' ministry where he went back up into heaven. There was so much controversy surrounding the disciples and the new teachings that they were sharing from Jesus. Now, remember, society had done a lot to try to discredit Jesus' teachings and the works that he had done while he was alive. Those who did not believe that Jesus was the Messiah tried in many ways to do things to discredit the fact that he actually was who he said he was. And one of the things they did was, for instance, the communion, the breaking of bread that would happen at the end of or at the ascension the society around hearing that we break this bread and eat it, remember it is the body of Christ, like that, for instance. They went around saying that these followers of Jesus who would not let go of him are eating human flesh. Yes? And they began to formulate stories of cannibalism. They began to formulate stories that the worship of idols was better because this invisible God that required that you eat human flesh had to be evil. And so here in Wisdom 14 verse 27, King Solomon, who is before the time of Jesus, is stating that the worship of idols who cannot be named, the worship of idols who, as we heard in our reading yesterday, cannot compare to the created or to the creator of all things. 
idols which are created beings when you worship those that is the cause and the end of every evil and for the society at the time to discredit for the society at Jesus's time to discredit all that Jesus did in his lifetime to try to make false of what was actually true to try to replace it with frivolous things like wooden and bronze statues absolutely rubbish and it made me think about the fact that we today witnesses of the miracles and the glory of God in our own time we having all of this testimony is what I used to call it testimony of the stories in the Bible still from time to time some more than others put material things and physical things before the worship of God and we do not realize that from Solomon's day to worship idols was the beginning and cause of every evil and you know I don't understand lost for words it says the worshipers of idols rave in exaltation or rails in false prophecy they live unrighteously and they are ready to commit perjury so they take pleasure in doing what is wrong they see no wrong in discrediting almighty god for the worship of these false idols they see no wrong in discrediting the truth that is visibly present because they trust in lifeless idols and they swear wicked oaths and expect to suffer no harm no they expect to suffer no harm that part is scary for me because those then that were worshiping idols in Solomon time those who discredited or tried to discredit the ministry of Jesus while he was alive those who tried to discredit the teachings of Jesus after his death and resurrection and ascension those who to this day still try to argue and discredit the teachings of Jesus now in our time how can they expect to suffer no harm who is bold enough to stand against God and think that they could be victorious and Solomon goes on to say in verse 30 that just penalties will overtake them on two accounts and look at the two accounts one because they thought wrongly about God in devoting themselves to idols so to give your attention time and devotion to anything other than God you have to know that there's a penalty to pay and two because they in deceit they swore unrighteously through contempt for holiness so they thought wrong and gave their devotion to false idols and two unrighteously they swore through contempt for holiness they did not value the things of God that was holy well if you're not valuing God how can you try to value what is of God things of holiness yes and how is it this is my question how is it that we have not learned the lesson how is it that we still find ourselves in the position where we do exactly that and Solomon in his time is trying with his people Jesus in his time is trying with his people we in our time hopefully are trying with ours verse 31 says the just penalty for those who sin that always pursue the transgression of the righteous yes is going to befall them and Solomon goes on in chapter 15 of wisdom yes to contrast the fact that those who give themselves over to the worship of anything other than God and for us you might not have statues in your house 
or carved images, graven images of any kind. But what is it that you put before God? When you roll over on a Sunday morning, yes? And decidedly choose to not spend that one hour and 15 minutes with God. When you decide to not spend five minutes in prayer before you rush up from your bed and rush into the day. And this doesn't apply to you because you are here every morning and I give God thanks for your faithfulness and your commitment to him. Yes, not to me. To be committed to me, rubbish. To be committed to God, absolutely fantastic. We don't have carving or graven images, but we still put things before God. When we choose the way of injustice, when we choose the way of lying, when we choose harsh words over words that build up, we are still putting things before God. And the putting of things before God in whatever form is what Solomon is speaking against. In his time, it was carved images and idols. In our time, it is a party on Saturday night because we figure we could sleep late on Sunday morning because Sunday is the day of rest. And then neglect spending time with God. And I could use that as an example because for many years, that was my thinking. God will understand if I don't go this Sunday. And I only hang out with my friends. And due to COVID, many hangouts not happen. But you get the point. And Solomon contrasts the worship of false idols with the words in verse 15. The first few, verse 1 of chapter 15, sorry. You, our God, you are kind and true, patient and ruling all things in mercy. For even if we sin, we are yours. Knowing your power, but we will not sin because we know that you acknowledge us as yours. And listen, if God were not kind and true, if God was not kind and true, if he was not patient and if he did not rule all things in mercy, child, I don't know where I would be. Because time and time again, I choose to turn away from him. Time and time again, his steadfast love calls me to return. And no matter how often I put things before him, decidedly or unconsciously, still he looks at me with love, forgives me, and brings me back home. I mean, verse 2 sinks it home for me. Even if we sin, we are yours. He doesn't stop loving us because we sin. The enemy convinces us that because we sin, we are unworthy of his love. And it's not true. Because God's word, God's word tells us that there is nothing in heaven, on earth, or under the earth that could ever separate us from the love of God through Jesus Christ. Nothing. Which means that nothing that we do stops him from loving us. The wrong that we do stop us from loving him because of our guilt. And I don't know that I could be as bold as Solomon to say in verse 2 that we will not sin because we know that you acknowledge us as yours. I will try, Solomon, to not sin because we know that God acknowledges us as his. I will try, Solomon. I can't say I will not. Because Solomon, thanks to Paul, I recognize that I'll have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And I'll win sin. But like Paul says, because I know God will forgive me, should I keep on sinning? No, I should try to not sin, Solomon. Because I can't say I will not. Wicked man that I am. But God in his complete righteousness... That is what we should strive to know. God in his complete power, who is the root of all immortality. I feel terrible that like those in Solomon's time who worship idols, 
like those who, after the death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus, tried to discredit his life and his work and his ministry. I, too, at times, through my actions, discredit his life, his work, and his ministry. And it saddens me. But I take courage in knowing that my kind, true, patient, merciful God is always there to call me home. And that's the promise. Undeserving as we are, he looks on us with love. He treats us with only the love that God can give. Undeserving as we are. And for that, we should be grateful. Solomon hit me hard with those words this morning. May we all strive together to encourage each other to remain faithful to God who in his righteousness and mercy continues to shower us with his love most so through the love of the sacrifice of his son Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen, there are days when I feel truly unworthy of God's goodness. We'll continue this morning with the profession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. For our suffrages this morning, we will use suffrage C, which can be found on page 44 if you are following along in your books of common prayer. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Our first collet for this morning is the collet for the fifth Sunday of Easter, which can be found on page 169 in our Books of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, Grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Together we say a prayer for the renewal of life. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning. Drive far from us all wrong desires and incline our hearts to keep your law and guide our feet into the way of peace. That having done your will with cheerfulness while it was day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we turn our prayers to our 
prayers of thanksgiving and personal intercession. This morning, we would like to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday is Ms. Shanaika Hernandez, Ms. Arlette Gomez, and Mr. Stalin Brackett. We wish you, ladies and gentlemen, a happy and blessed birthday, and we pray God's continual blessing upon you for all the remaining days of your life. Happy birthday! We continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery. And we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith, Miss Ines, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine, Miss Agnes, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, Miss Marilyn, Miss Louise, Miss Daniela. We pray for Miss Monica, Miss Eileen, Miss Des. Miss Sonia, Miss Justine, Miss Yolanda, Miss Soila, Miss Beryl, Miss Janet, Miss Josephine, and Miss Elena. We continue to pray for Miss Margaret, Miss Sylvia, Miss Janice, Miss Aislin, Miss Felicia, Miss Leslie, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Olga, Miss Nina, and Miss Edlene. We pray for Miss Mary, Miss Harris, Miss Marva, Miss Dylan, Miss Julie, Miss Jessica. Miss Maria E, Miss Althea, Miss Anisetta, Miss Dominique, and Miss Donna. We continue to remember and pray for the following of our brothers Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Leon, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. William, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Oscar R, and Mr. Philip. We pray for Mr. Rudolph, Mr. Finley, Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Glenford, Mr. Anthony, Mr. Antoine, and Mr. Charles. We remember and pray for Mr. Eliseo, Mr. Rupert, Mr. Costa, Mr. Ian, Mr. Michael Savaranis, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Damien, and Mr. Freddy. We pray for Mr. Normando, Mr. Dion, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Alfred, and Mr. Dudley. We continue to remember in our prayers those persons who are grieving the loss of a loved one at this time. We continue to remember and pray for the family of Miss Janice Dawson, the family of Miss Linda Goff, and the family of Mr. Samuel Griffith. We continue to pray for God's comfort and peace on all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, and we pray for return and rest for those who have died. We continue to remember and pray for our loved ones who are far away from us. We pray for our students, Ashley, Akua, Tammy, Anwa, Karina and Courtney. We remember our loved ones in the military, praying for Emil and Jade at this time. We continue to pray for the enablement and protection of all our medical professionals in the performance of their duties. We remember and pray for Dr. Molina, Dr. Manzanero, Dr. Shogreen, Dr. Arana, and Dr. Joseph, Dr. Sosa, and Dr. Cuellar. We remember our nurses, praying for Nurse McKin, Nurse Gill, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Orell, Nurse Joyce Lynn, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Aaron, and Nurse Alejandra. We continue to pray for healing for all persons who are infected with COVID-19. We pray for those in the various isolation wards. We pray for families and friends who would love to be there to show moral support but cannot because of the restriction. We continue to pray for a cure or a vaccine to become readily available for this disease. We pray for persons who are awaiting either the first or second vaccines. We pray for God's peace to be upon them against their anxieties. We pray for indeed the containment and elimination of this COVID-19. We continue in our prayers to 
pray for the combating of the economic fallout caused by this pandemic. We pray for those industries most severely hit. We pray for persons who would have lost employment or who would have experienced a salary reduction. We pray for those who are in danger of these things. We continue to pray for our country as we face our own economic hardships and we pray for those persons who have taken to industrial action in order to express their concerns. We continue to pray for the most vulnerable in our society, to pray for the poor, the needy, the elderly, those with pre-existing health conditions. We continue to pray for God's divine mercy and wisdom and discernment to be upon the members of our security forces, our government, persons in positions of public trust and authority, our church leaders, and our churches, the private sector, and all non-governmental organizations who are involved in the fight against COVID-19. We continue to pray for the members of the international community who presently suffer as a result of COVID-19, remembering those countries whose cases of infections are continually rising, praying specifically for the nation of India. We continue to pray and ask for God's protection over ourselves and our region against the ravages of natural disasters, and we continue to pray for and support the relief effort for those persons in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, as well as Barbados and St. Lucia. For the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercessions by praying together, Almighty and Eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your law and the works of your commandments that under your protection now and ever we may be preserved in body and soul through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining us for morning prayer this morning. It is indeed a privilege and blessing to be able to wake up to greet a new day. There are those who did not live to see this morning and we pray for their eternal rest. And of course, we know that there are those who, while they woke up, would have woken up with pains, aches, and concerns that are plaguing them. We give God thanks for our life and we pray that he might use us as an instrument of healing to those around us. I want to remind you of our broadcast schedule for the remainder of today. Today is Thursday, if I am not mistaken. Today is Thursday and following this broadcast, we will have noonday devotions at midday and then we will close off with compline for this evening i believe we have bible study at 7 30 um, and of course we'll be sharing the zoom link for the bible study as well i want to thank all of you who support the bible study it is a beautiful time of discussion and we are looking at the teachings on baptism at this point in time as we continue with the sensitization process of baptism as the new means of entry into the Lord's Supper of Communion. So please join us for any or all of these broadcasts and happenings as you are able. And again, we want to thank you for your continued support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Belize. I was chuckling this morning as I was getting ready, saying to myself, these people are probably tired of seeing this logo on my clothes. But you know something? Almost all my clothes now have this logo. And I think it's good considering that I will be using it probably until I can't move anymore. We're going to conclude this morning with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace and our final hymn. The Rev is having a silly moment just then. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve our persons in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to close off this morning with one entitled, Each Step I Take... I know my Savior's with me. Something to that effect. I could never remember the words of this song. I know I like it. I pray you have a blessed and beautiful day today. Please do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. 
Smile today. It lights up your face and it shares God's peace with the world. And believe me, even if you're wearing a mask, there are little lines that form at the corner of your eyes. When you smile and these lines don't come, it means your, line, your smile is not sincere. When you smile and it crinkles up in the corner, that's a smile that's all the way from the inside. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Same place, same time. Until then, God bless. And bye for now. Mr. by day, my Savior goes before me, and with his loving hand he leads the way, and with each breath I whisper, I adore thee. Oh, what joy to walk with him each day, each step I take, I know that he will guide me. Step by day, just leads me closer home.